Hello folks, I'm Grimwit from NatchEvil.com, and this is Natchian News. Very important. I will be taking next week off, as it is the anniversary of my marriage. Queenie and I will be headed to the beach in the beginning of autumn, and maybe getting a moon tan. I don't know what, but I do know I won't be working. So the next episode of World Send Gate will appear on September 30th, 2013. In the meantime, might I suggest another Let's Play? I watch and read so many of them. This time, I recommend reading Gazillionaire Deluxe, played by Digia Redu. Like most good Let's Plays, Digia took his gameplay and turned it into something wholly his own. He tells a story about Slev and Tarkla as they start an interplanetary shipping company, get involved in a strange space bureaucracy, and try to keep their pilot from killing everyone. Again. It's a funny and oddly well-written read, considering that the original game, Gazillionaire, has no story. It was meant to be a finance simulator to teach children about money management. Bonus, it's a short read for a screenshot Let's Play. It's also very good stuff. Check for a link in the description below. We have a correction from last week. I said month was our first non-US voice, but duh. Azriel was. Australia? Hello? Place where everything's strange and poisonous? I'll just wrap my lips around a gun barrel now. No, wait. I'll have to do that after the Autumn Beach. If you saw the shame video, you know that our guest voice for the week, Duckling, was unable to participate. It seems her laptop failed her, and, tragically, it's still alive. Replacing her will be Seedlet, and I think she has a new mic. With that said, please enjoy this fine episode of Whirlsend. Sin Gate Episode 7 Am Human by Mike Rojas Additional Voice by Evil Seedlet July 1921 Vulture Pain Road next to the bridge It was a dark and stormy night when Taxi Smith walked into the Mutton Glutton Family Restaurant and Memorial Services. Lillian's jaw dropped. She understood that everyone in Whirlsend, except herself, was a unique snowflake with their own quirks, perks, and mutilations. She alone seemed like a normal and beautiful girl, her eyes gray and her hair golden and long, like all her twins. As an outsider looking in, Lillian had known the strangeness that Whirlsend had to offer. Taxi, however, was a breed this Lillian had never seen before. Of course she'd heard of the, well, the best word to use would be thing, right? The twin nearly stumbled backwards into the kitchen, pointing Taxi out to the cook. Chef Cheeseworm, ugh, what is that? Taxi Smith's scales were shiny and green, and his bulbous eyes pointed in opposite directions, barely able to look side to side. He wore his thick red tie so high up his neck that it almost covered his gills. His lips never closed, so Lillian could always see his sharp, serrated teeth, and sometimes even the stench of Taxi's breath. His slightly webbed fingers hooked into claws. Taxi smiled and looked around. Is Homan feed store, yes? Is good Homan feed store. I like use of tree corpse that make it. The thing's movements were stiff and clumsy when he hung up his jacket and hooked a swimming mask over the coat. I Homan, so I eat at feed store too. He nodded at Gerald Weissman, who was eating a salad alone. Taxi greeted in a matter-of-fact tone, Fellow human, I will not eat you. Thanks, the patron responded. 
Chef. Lillian was half in a panic at the sight of the monster thing sitting down at one of the tables. It's sitting down now. What is it? Chef Cheeseworm had no patience for the waitress. He was too busy running an Italian circus act in the kitchen, juggling knives, pans, fire, lamb, and spices. It's a customer, Cheeseworm said. You gonna get his order, huh? Lillian gulped and did what she was asked. She didn't see any focus or notice in the lidless eyes of the green man as she snuck up to taxi. She moved carefully towards the beast, sliding her feet inch by inch. From about an arm's length, Lillian tentatively reached out with her pen and gave Taxi a gentle poke. Ah! screamed Taxi. Ah! screamed Lillian. Ah! Taxi stopped and smiled. Is good human greeting. I like this greeting. Yes! Ah! He screamed again. Well, what are you talking about? Lillian could feel her blood rushing back and forth, as if all the traffic directors in her veins were drunk and or blind. What greeting? The human scream of greeting. Taxi know this. Every time human enters a store that belongs to me, a human screams. Oh, fun greetings. Huh? No, humans don't scream at each other. They say hello. What can mean you by this? I, human, I scream back too. Then ritual runaway begins. I chase and offer soda. No, no, no. They must just be scared of you. You'd understand if you were human. Taxi frowned and looked around the room, rotating his head 200 degrees. Then he looked back at Lillian and said, N No, I, I am human. Swear to Dagon. Look, have human throat. His mouth opened wide enough to swallow a live turkey, and then he pointed at his disturbing gullet. Lillian laughed nervously. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, can I just get your order? Oh, yes. Do you serve flesh? Lillian only stared and slowly shook her head in horror. No flesh? Taxi understand. I look at word menu. He gave another paranoid glance around the restaurant. I... N not from here. From France City. Serve dead flesh there. Yes. The waitress didn't speak. She shut her eyes tight and slowly backed away, bumping into an old man with spirally eyes under a straw hat. Hey now, that's no way to dance, lady. The mayor reached up, spun Lillian around, then started to two-step while humming. La da 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 See? Like that! Mmm, lady, you smell pretty. Like the inside of my daughter's dresser drawers. Stop that! Lillian pulled away and brushed herself off. Oh, Mr. Peter, it's you. That's Mayor Peter, young whippersnapper. The mayor pointed to the paper badge held on his coat with a safety pin. It read, Official something something. Much of the ink was blotted from rain. Lillian rolled her eyes. Whirlson Gate didn't have a government, let alone a leader. Now go back there and tell the cook, I'll have my usual. St. Peter took out a red flask to swig while he made his way to an empty table. He didn't bother taking off his wet jacket. After he sat, the mayor and taxi met eyes. Yeah! He screamed. Ah! Taxi replied. Taxi looked at his soup, then at his spoon, then again at his soup. It was hard for him to see, as his eyes didn't have a central focal point. Using the spoon, he took a bit of soup, drew it close, opened his mouth wide, and tried to pour the soup onto his tongue with mixed results. The mayor humphed at Taxi. Do you mind not slurping? I am full of sorry, human. The mayor's soup was still steaming hot. Mayor Peter picked up his own spoon, sighed happily while he examined it, and planted his face directly into his bowl. His screams of pain could be heard over the bubbling. 
No, no, we already agreed. Taxi tried to shrug again with mixed results and followed the mayor's lead. The fishman and the old man were the last two patrons of the night. Lillian watched them as if they were a vaudeville act. I think we'll need some ice for the mayor, Chef Cheeseworm. She shrugged. He looks pretty hot. No time for dreaming about the boys, lovely Lillian. Go and check on the guests. Go! Go! Right. If this were the town fair during the competitive eye-rolling event, Lillian felt like she could beat everyone, even her sisters, that night. The mayor had just re-emerged gasping when she approached his table. His face was scalded red and dripping. She handed him a napkin and said, Mr. Peter, is anything the matter? Darn tootin'. Where's the snorkel? I got a fork and a knife, but no snorkel. You trying to drown me? Uh, I'll see what I can do. Lillian then spun around to Mr. Smith. And you, sir? Is everything to your liking? Taxi turned his soaking head in confusion. He's flying my soup. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'll have the chef get you a new bowl. He's good. More flies. Uh, yes. As soon as Lillian backed out of the room, Taxi waved at the mayor. He's so lucky. When I leave home on nest, I bring snorkel. He reached for his coat and pulled a swimming mask off the rack. He's wet outside, yes? Snorkel to survive in wet. Well, thank you kindly, taxi. Here, you can have my flies. The mayor shook his sleeve and 21 dead flies poured into taxi soup. That's it. I quit. Lillian wadded up her apron and threw it on the kitchen floor. I'm done. Through. I can't take this place anymore. Hey, don't be like that, Lillian. Chef Cheeseworm used his hands to talk better than his tongue. You're like a gym to me. What's the matter? Whatever it is, I'll fix it. This is my last night, Chef. Every night, there's always been something stranger and stranger. Do you know what that means? Uh, the chef took off his hat and scratched his head. Business is good? That means that every night I work here is the strangest night of my life. Lillian shook her head. No, I don't need this job. I heard Madame Lissa has an opening for a bartender. At least there all the strange men will be drunk. Cheeseworm stepped in between the rear door and Lillian. You you can't do this to me, my beauty, my amore. You're the love of my life. Your looks, they attract all the customers, huh? I need you to make the restaurant grow. Don't go, please. Look, Mr. Cheeseworm, I'm a normal girl. I need a normal setting. Now... The young girl pushed the man aside. If you need me, I'll be working at the Red House with my six to ten identical twins. The chef stood there, watching her step out into the rain, wearing her snorkel. Don't bother asking for Lillian. We're all named Lillian. Just ask for the bartender. Good day, sir. If you like Whirlson Gate or Natchian News, hit like, share, subscribe, or whatever. There's also a link in the doodly doo if you're kind enough to donate to the cause. Every dollar will bring me closer to my dream. A dream where I'm in a house, above which floats a massive green ocean. The dirt crawls like spiders into the dead bodies of goats, and there's this loud buzzing sound. Oh, that's my alarm. Super thanks goes to Evil Seelit for the quick reply of her voice work. If you like Seelit's voice, she's got a YouTube channel. Check the description for that. Music for this show was unknowingly provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. You can find a link to his website in the description as well. One suite provided by Archive.org. Let's hear it for expired copyrights. Check the link in the description for neat old-timey music. Today's noun was the mayor. Leave a comment suggesting your favorite person, place, or thing from this episode, and I will include it in the next episode, forming a chain of nouns. Have nothing but fun, YouTubes. Have nothing but fun.